We're delighted to have you here today. You're very welcome. This is Knitting Across the Nation Airfield to Aran, and this is part of the Krununununog Festival 2021. We're really delighted to have you here. We're coming to you from Airfield, and we're going to be going through some of the basic knitting and stitch techniques today. So my name is Leah, and I'm going to be showing you how to do uh, some knitting and then some different ways that you can decorate the, the knitting that you do. So now, so today we're going to be showing you how to knit some hand warmers and it's quite straightforward. There's different levels of complexity you can do. So one of the most simple things is just to do the garter stitch. So you only need to know how to do knit stitches for that. So that's it. It looks the same on the front and the back. So this is the most simple version. And another thing we can look at doing is a slightly more complex um, with the rib and then the stockinette stitch. And that you only need to know two different stitches for this one. So for this one, the simple one, it's just a knit stitch. And for the little bit more complicated one, there's a knit and a purl stitch. So it's really just two stitches. And we'll show you how to do that. We'll also look at some different ways that you can then decorate the hand warmers. So obviously everyone has their own fashion sense, that's great, and knitting is perfect for that. There's so much diversity. So um, we'll look at how to do the hand warmers that have the little um, ribbon in them. Doo -doo -doo. So they'd be like that. For this one, the little knitting pamphlet that is either in the packs or on the website, has uh, the technique of how to make the little holes here. We'll talk about that more later on. And we'll look at doing Swiss darning. So this is just knit the same way as, as this one, very straightforward. But then you can put your own design onto it afterwards with different color wool. So we'll look at that one. And then finally, we'll just look at some other ways that you could, um, you know, do up your, your gloves. So this one has some different things sewn on. This, um, yeah, this is a bit flowery and frilly, but um, there's different things you could sew on to make it suit your own taste, okay? So that's some different things we'll be doing today. So if anyone has any questions throughout the workshop, we'd be more than happy to have them. You can write them in the chat box and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can, okay? Thank you. Now, so some of you might have received the starter pack in the post and it might have come up a package like this and um, so that will have a ball of wool it'll have some needles like these ones our knitting pamphlet and then some darning needles if you didn't receive the pack that's no problem you can still do the workshop like I said and um, so you might have some wool at home yourself that you can use um, and you might have your own needles so the ones in the starter pack are short ones like this and they're really handy for when you're doing things uh, small, like some gloves or some hand warmers. Um, but some of you might have the longer needles at home, like these ones, and that's no problem. They work perfectly just as good. The needles we're using are 4.5 needles, millimeter. Um, if you only have a size four needle at home or a five, like that's no problem, they'll work just as good. Um, the wool we're using is a double knit, so that just refers to how thick the wool is. And again, if the wool you have at home isn't a double knit, um, but it's kind of similar to this weight, to this thickness, you can totally use that. That's no problem. It's just if it's really thin or really chunky, you might need to, to, to you know, change the pattern a tiny bit. Um, but basically, you can use what you have. If you don't have our pack, that's no problem. And so speaking of use what you have, if you don't have any wool, any needles at home you can still listen in on the workshop you can still practice your stitches and you can still make things so here is something I made with a pair of chopsticks that I had in the press at home and some twine so this is gardening twine so definitely might not be the comfiest pair of gloves or hand warmers but you could totally uh, practice your stitches in the using materials like this and you could actually make a pot scrub with this. So you could um, knit a little bit and then sew it together and it would be really good for scrubbing pots. 
You could also sew it together in a strip, put an elastic band through it and make a scrunchie or you can make some sort of bracelet. Um, but it would be really good if you don't have wool or needles yet at home, not to panic, you can still practice. You could use, I don't know, maybe drumsticks if you have them or any two, like pencils would actually work as well. So you can still be practicing your knit and your purl and your cast on and your cast off. So there's no worries if you don't have the needles yet. I know not everyone's been able to get to shops since they opened and so there's no panic. We'll also be looking at some other things you can use uh, to make yarn. So one thing you can use that you probably do have at home if you have an old t-shirt is you can make t-shirt yarn and that's really cool. So again it might be a bit um, too chunky for making gloves but you can use it to make something like a scarf. Um, so you've been knitting something maybe the same thickness but this t-shirt yarn is chunkier so we'll show you that later on. We'll go into more detail with that later. Yeah, so before we get started on the knitting techniques and the knitting stitches uh, we're going to talk a little bit about wool and yarn. So we do have some lovely um, activity sheets on the website that goes into more detail about the wool and there's some puzzles and it has a bit about the history and a bit about how wool is made, how yarn is made. So in the um, packs that were sent out we have the Airfield Jacob Sheep wool and as you can see it's grey. So this wool is actually made, the sheep have black and white spots, they're piebald. Um, so when the wool is spun, the black and white wool is spun together and it makes this natural grey colour. So this wool has not been dyed. So it hasn't been dyed and it's lovely uh, sheep's wool that's literally from Dundrum. So that we sent off to get processed. But we have another one here. So this is also made from the Jacob sheep wool. So in this instance, uh, we just use the white fleece. So this is actually the raw fleece that's just off the sheep. You shear it off um, and it looks like this and you pick out all the organic matter, all the dirt and you card it, which is like brushing it and spin it. And this one is actually really cool because it was hand spun. So it's really, really cool. And in some parts it gets a bit skinnier and in some parts it gets a bit thicker. And that's something I love about hand spool, hand spun wool. I think it's really lovely. And this one's actually a little tiny bit softer than this one. So they're both the Jacob wool. These are the ones we are send, sending out to people. And this is just a special hand spun version with just the white. Obviously, grey is really nice and it's really natural, but you might want to eventually knit stuff that isn't grey. And there's tons and tons of options. So knitting is super because you can really personalize what you're knitting to suit your own taste. Um, so there are different ways that wool can be dyed. It can be synthetic dyes or there can be natural dyes, which is really cool using natural materials. So we also have workshops on that. And there's also activity sheets about the natural dyeing. So you can learn a little bit more about that if you want to. Um, but these wool, this is also Irish wool. It's also from sheep, but it's from a different type of sheep than the Jacob. So it's from Romy and then Blueface Leicester. So those sheep, um, their wool is a little bit softer. So it's really nice and soft. And this I think is so beautiful. So it's base dyed. So the wool is dyed in a big bath, but then they also have hand painted it. So they've put in bits of color by hand. And then when this is knit, it'll, it's called self-striping. So when this is knit, it'll do an effect like this, where the color will change as you do your rows. So this cream and then gray and then black is actually all one ball of yarn. And it makes this lovely effect. So this piece is actually done by an Irish um, textile designer called Kieran Foley, and it's just really gorgeous. He also did this piece. So this piece is done using color in a different way. So here, instead of using one ball to do all the colors, each color is done with a different ball of yarn. So you knit a piece and then you change the ball, you change the color and then you knit another piece. So this block work, color work, um, is done using, using different balls of wool. And this is also by Kiran and it's inspired by um, Turkish carpets 
and I think you can really see that inspiration in this piece. I think it's really pretty. Um, and another way that you can use colour, and um, this is a jumper that I knit a few years ago, and the technique is, is ferrile. So you're using different, different balls, similar to this, but in the same row, you're changing the colour in the same row. So that's how you get the different, um, the different colours in the stripes there. Um, so this is using Shetland wool, so again, a little bit different from our Jacob wool, it has a different feel. And then this jumper I knit with alpaca, so it's, it's really soft. So there's tons of colours, but also there's lots of different textures and feeling that the wool can have. So as you progress in your knitting, you will, I'm sure you'll find different textures and different thicknesses of wool and different colours that you like and different ways to use the colour. So we're finally going to get started on the actual knitting stitches themselves and how to knit. So in the next section, you're going to need your needles and some a ball of wool, and we'll we'll get started and we'll show you how to um, how to make the little hand warmer. Okay, so we're ready to start our knitting tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot and then we're going to cast on our stitches. And this is the first thing we need to do before we are able to do any knitting. So I've taken um, some yarn off the ball of wool. So I've just taken a little bit off. So I have the end of the wool here. And we are always going to leave a bit, a few inches of yarn uh, loose at the end before we do our slip knot. So it's not going to be up here. That's too short. We need to do it down here, okay? So we're going to start, I do a slip knot by wrapping it around my finger two times to make an X. So like this. So I have a nice X here. And I lift this bit up and I bring this under. And that's how we make the slip knot. So I'll show you one more time. So we make the X, we pull this bit up, and then we pull this bit up and we can do it. And this is a great little loop because it's adjustable. You can make it tighter or you can make it looser. So that's our first little loop and we're gonna put the needle in and we can make it a bit tighter. So the knot nearly comes up to the needle. We don't want it to be too tight. We want it to be able to move around like that. Okay, so I have my tail on this side and this side is attached to the, the ball. The ball of wool. Yeah, so that's our slip knot, and um, that's also basically the first stitch that we've cast on. So when you're casting on, um, you you count this as one of the stitches. So I'll show you now how I hold the needles as well, because that's very important. People have different ways of, of holding the needles, and that's okay. I'll show you the way that works best for me. And you might have a different way, and that's no problem. Okay, so I always wrap the yarn around my baby finger and for me that just makes sure that um, it's not too tight or too loose. This helps me a lot with the tension. Okay and you're holding the right hand needle as if you're holding a pencil, as if you're holding a pencil. So um, these middle fingers are just here to kind of gently hold the yarn and then this finger here, your index finger, is doing all the moving around. So it's doing all the work by moving the yarn around, okay? So that's how I hold the, the needles. So I've wrapped it around my baby finger. And this is now how you do your casting on stitches, okay? So these are the casting on stitches. So under and over, out, through, there we go. So that's, your first casting on stitch, but you've actually got two stitches already now on the needle here, on the left hand needle. So that's what they're going to look like. We don't want them to be too uh, tight, so we want to keep this part of the wool not too tight. 
if we make it too tight, it'll be really difficult for us to get the needle into this loop here. So we'll continue casting on now. So when we're casting on, we're going into this little loop here. If you can see that, we're going into that loop. And we're looping the yarn around. We're coming out. And we're going over the end of the left hand needle. So at this stage, we can tighten it a little bit. That's when I use my baby finger. And you can pull the wool a little bit so it's not uh, too loose. If it's too loose, it's no problem. It just means that it'll be a little bit, um, it'll be a bit looser. It'll be have little holes in it. Um, but that's not a problem. So one of the hardest things about knitting is having your wool at the right tension. And the more you practice, the easier that will get. Going into the loop. Yeah, so we'll just count. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven stitches. It's a good idea to keep counting as you go and um, the whole way through your knitting project. If you count how many stitches, you'll really quickly know if you have done a mistake. At the moment, we're counting to see if we need to do more. So we need 32 stitches altogether for casting on for our hand warmers. So we need some more stitches. So we'll cast on some more. Now, so I've just done my 30 second stitch. So I did all the stitches the exact same way as the second stitch and the third stitch. So they're all the same. And when you come to the end, you don't need to do anything special. So this last stitch is just the exact same as all the others. And that's what it looks like. So this is the cast on row. And this is the first row of your knitting. Okay, so next we're going to do a few rows of plain knitting. And these rows of knitting are just as practice. So when you're doing the, um, the hand warmer, you'll see that there's different patterns. And one of them has plain knitting the garter stitch, that's the easiest one. So you could, that's how you're gonna do that pattern. But if you wanna do the more complicated patterns with the rib, um, basically this next few rows of knitting is just practice. And what you can always do with your knitting is you can do a bit of practice with the yarn and then you can take it off the needle. It's called ripping it back. You can basically undo what you did and do it again. So that's really cool, it's very sustainable. You don't need to keep getting new yarn every time. So these next few rows are the just plain knitting rows and they, you can do them as practice. It's always good to do some practice before you do your first project. So I'm holding the needle in the exact same way as before. So I have it looped around here and these fingers are just kind of holding the yarn. And you go into the loop like you did before and get over and instead of going over like we did we're just going to pull the old stitch off and that's the stitch now that we have and we can pull the yarn a little bit to tighten the loop up here Go into the loop. We're just coming up to the end of the row. The last few stitches. So we have two stitches left. One, two. And we do them exactly the same as all the other stitches. So this is the last stitch into the loop, under and over, and out. And now all the stitches from this needle are on this needle. And you can flatten it out. And that's our first row of knitting done. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do the exact same thing again. So we're going to turn this needle around. And this has now become our left hand needle. This is our little tail, so it's better to hold that so we don't get confused between the two. 
and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did. So we're going to knit into each stitch. So each loop on the needle is one stitch. Now, so we've just done two practice rows of our knit stitches. So that's what it looks like. You want them all to look more or less the same. Don't want any big holes or loops. But it gets easier with practice. So don't worry if you're finding it a bit tricky at the beginning. That's why we're practicing for now. And like I said, it's really easy. It makes it easier if you have some yarn off the ball. So you can just take some yarn off, and have a lot of string off the, off the ball, and it just makes it easier. Uh, you don't get too tight then, the stitches don't get too tight. It's just a little tip. So next we're gonna practice some purl. So purl stitches are like the, the backwards of a, of a knit stitch. It basically makes the back of a knit stitch. So uh, we just need to do things a little bit differently. This hand is the same as before, holding the left hand needle. And then this is set up the same. I have my, my pinky around the yarn and my finger here holding the yarn a little bit. But this time our needle needs to be in uh, behind the yarn. So before it was like this and now it is like this. So we're putting the needle into the front of the left, left hand needle. We're going under and over the same as before and out the same as before and off the same as before. It's only a little bit different. Going in. In. You can push this a little bit closer to the top, but don't push it off. That's something I do by accident sometimes. So really in the knitting, your index finger is doing 99% of the work. After you've done your practice rows, you can uh, rip back the practice rows. So you just basically slide the needle out and you pull the yarn and it'll unravel. And that way you can start again. So you can use the same yarn to, to do your knitting for your hand warmer. And then once you've done that, you can do your cast on row again. So I've just cast on 32 stitches again, and now we're gonna start our rib. So if you're doing the easy hand warmers, the beginner version that just has rows of knitting, then you can just do rows of knitting, but this bit that I'm going to do is for the slightly harder, the in intermediate, um, medium difficulty, uh, and that has a rib. So we need to basically do two knit stitches and two purl stitches. So one, two of our knit stitches. So now we have two stitches here, and we bring the yarn to the front, and we do our two purl stitches. We bring the yarn down to the back and we do our two purl stitches again. And we continue until the end of the row. So weaving two purls here to knit. And if you get confused and you think, oh, am I doing knit stitches or a purl now? You can always check. So we did them all in two. So knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. So now we have to do purl. 
so I've just done a few rows of the rib, so a few rows of knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and you can start to see the effect that it's having. It makes it bumpy, it goes up and down. So um, you can see the differences between the knit and the purl. When you knit into your knit stitches, it looks like this. It's very open. Knit two. And you can see then the purl, it has the bar going across the front there. So that's the one you need to purl. So they look different and you get used to how they both feel. They both feel different. So that's uh, that one, but here's one I did earlier on. And you can see I've just finished it off. So there was 12 rows of the rib and that's what it looks like in the end, okay? So this is the rib and when you're, um, finished the glove, the rib will be down the bottom. It'll be this part. And it's lovely because it makes it a little bit tighter at the bottom. It just, uh, it's the same as if you had a cuff on a jumper, at the sleeve of a jumper, it would be like that. So it's a really nice effect, very simple to do. Great, so you've done your rib, and then after the rib, you're gonna do your row of knit, your row of purl, your row of knit. And um, you do that for until it reaches 18 centimeters altogether. So this is about 18 centimeters. You could do it a little bit shorter if you want to, that's no problem. And you'll basically see it looks different on the back and the front. So this is actually the front. And each little V, you can see there's lots of little Vs here. Those little Vs are each a stitch. And these are the stitches um, on the front. And then the stitches on the back are like little bumpy little waves. They look a little like bumps. They look like little bumps. So this is the back of the work and this is the front of the work. So once it's long enough, um, you can cast off. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So um, the last row we did was the purl row. We have our knit row facing towards us. The front of the work is facing towards us. And we're gonna cast off. So we're gonna do a knit stitch and another knit stitch. So we've done two knit stitches, we've knitted two stitches, and then we're going to just bring the first stitch over the second stitch, like that. So we only have one stitch left. We're gonna keep doing the same thing, and every time we do it, we only want to have one stitch left on the right-hand needle. And again, we don't want to keep the yarn too tight. We don't want to pull this too hard. We want it to be a little bit loose so it's not too tight. We do that the whole way along. Now, so I'm just coming up to the end of my cast off row. So we're doing exactly the same as at the beginning. Every time we only want one stitch here. The last stitch is exactly the same, all the rest of them. And we just have one loop here at the end. So we want to leave that there for now. And we're going to cut the yarn off the ball but we want to leave a big tail so we want the tail to be about this long and this is my favorite part so we can pull this off and now we have the finished glove nearly finished so we just need to sew it up so you're going to sew it up using the tail and your darning needle and there's instructions in the pamphlet of how you do that but basically, you want to sew it here and leave a gap here for your thumb and then you can sew the end. So the gap will be like that. So you can measure on your own hand exactly where you want the gap to be. You could sew a little bit up and put your hand up and see if it's in the right place. So next we're going to look at a technique called Swiss darning and that's actually a type of embroidery. So we think of embroidery, we often think of stuff that's more like this with a sewing machine or needle and thread. 
And this piece is by a, a textile artist called Aileen Johnston. And it, she lives on a sheep farm. So she's done a picture of sheep here, which is gorgeous. She's also really big into knitting. So we just thought that would be a nice um, picture to show you. But we're not doing this type of embroidery. We're going to be doing uh, embroidery with the wool. And so this is an example. There. So she's done sheep and we're, we've done a sheep as well. So this is our embroidered sheep. And you can see here, we've actually put a button in for where the face is. So this is Swiss darning. It's also called a duplicate stitch sometimes. So I'm gonna show you how to do a heart like this. The sheep is maybe a little bit more complicated and you might wanna wait until it's your, you've practiced a little bit or it's your second go because it's a tiny bit more complicated, but this one is what we're gonna do today. And it's called a duplicate stitch as well as the Swiss darning because you're basically going over the little stitches you've already made. So it's like you're duplicating them. So we're gonna do that. Uh, first of all, you might want to, you don't have to do a heart. Um, I have done these on graph paper. So these are different examples of things you could do. So I actually just printed the graph paper off um, from the internet. So you don't even need to go and buy a, a book of graph paper. So this is a letter. You could do the letter, the first letter of your name if you wanted to. And then this one here is the heart that we have uh, done as an example. So we're going to show you how to do that next. So I'm starting at the bottom of my chart with this stitch. So this stitch on the pattern is equal to this stitch here. Okay. So for the next row, I want to go up and I'm starting it here. So I'm going up and over one. So I need to find the same stitch on my, my work. And it's here. So this is the bottom of the V of the next row that I'm starting. So I'm going to yarn out. So this is the V that I'm going to cover. So I go to the stitch above, I go behind the back. And then I go back into where I started. Okay, so that's that one. And then I want to go one stitch to the right next. So I go up at the bottom of the stitch. So it's this stitch here that I want to cover. So I'm going behind the stitch on top of that. So you don't want to pull the yarn too tight or it'll look a bit funny. Nice, yes, that's the three stitches there. Just these three stitches here. So the next stitch I'm going to do is this one. So I need to go up and over one on my piece. So that is here. Oops. Need to re-thread my needle. I just tightened it too much, so what you can do to fix it is to pull it up a little bit. There we go. Just pulling the pink yarn up to make it nice tight. And if you need to go back, if you make a mistake, it's super easy. You just take the yarn off the needle and pull it out. You can use the needle to help you and pull it up 
and pull it out and you can start again. So you keep going and you just follow the chart all the way up to the top. So this is the finished heart um, that I did. I just had a bit of pink yarn left over, so that's why I used that one. And I followed the chart all the way up to the top. But you could do any design you want. You could make up your own one. This is a sheep that we made up ourselves. So we used a little button for the face and a bit of leftover yarn then for the body. So there is lots of other ways that you can um, decorate your, your gloves. So we'll show you another one now. Now, so another way that you can decorate your hand warmers is by using things that you find around the house. So um, this one is got some bits sewn onto it. So this is a piece of crochet flower um, from when I was learning how to crochet. It was a practice flower that I made. And this is an old button. Uh, that I found in a press. So I've just sewn them on using some green twine or green thread here. And then this is actually a, a piece of ribbon from a cardigan that I had. So this is literally just using bits and bobs that you find around the house. Um, another thing you can do that we always do in our house is if we have an old cardigan or jumper, we keep all the buttons. Or you know sometimes buttons come on the tag of a jumper that you might buy new and you might not ever need the spare button so we always keep them because you never know when they'll come in handy so like this one's really pretty so you could sew them on any way you want you could do a little design if you have a few buttons you could do a face we also have then different beads from collected over the years so you could totally sew on anything that you find and it doesn't even matter if you run out of the the grey yarn, you could use any other string or anything to, to sew it on. So there's loads of possibilities. This one is a little bit flowery, um, but you could do different things. Now, so I mentioned earlier on that you could use a t-shirt to make yarn with if you didn't have any yarn or if you wanted to try something kind of different. So this is what I meant. So this uh, is using two different colored yarn but then also t-shirt material to do some of the knitting as well. So this is me starting a scarf here. This is a scarf I'm knitting. And this is the t-shirt. So you just mark out um, uh, stripes along it that are about, these ones are an inch thick. The ones I'm doing are actually half an inch thick. And you cut them out like this. And you just cut them out as long as you can get them and then you can literally just use it as is to do some um, some knitting so you just do the knitting stitches the exact same as before same as before and uh, it could be a really cool way to use if you have a t-shirt that you don't really wear anymore but you don't want to throw it in the bin you want it to have a second life you could do that and I'll just show you one other thing um, that I did. So this was actually um, leftovers from patchwork. So these are little strips of fabric and I've used them to do a little piece of weaving as well. So um, you could also use leftover yarn in weaving um, but basically nothing needs to be thrown away when you're when you're uh, doing crafts. Um, these are leftover bits and I've just turned them into something else to make a coaster. And when we're knitting at home we always keep all the tiny little bits of yarn that are left over no matter how small they are because you could use them for loads of things you could use them for doing crochet like the crochet flower like this size flower or with your swiss darning you could use little tiny bits of yarn leftover bits to do little details so the last tip i will leave you with is not to throw anything away that's why I have a little box here. I keep all the little tiny bits in. So yet another way you can decorate your gloves is by putting a ribbon through them like this. 
So to do this, you need to have done the version of the pattern that has the eyelets in it. So these holes where the ribbon is going through are called eyelets. And it's not hard to do, but you need to have thought about this before you've knit your hand warmers. Okay, so here is what the, the hand warmer looks like without the ribbon in it. So like I said, these holes are the eyelets and we have our hole here. So you might want to decide before you thread the ribbon through the eyelets where you want the bow to be. So I want the bow to be somewhere in the middle. So it's gonna be there somewhere. And so here is some ribbon that we literally saved from, I think, chocolate boxes or some sort of gift wrapping that we had in the house. Someone gave us a gift with ribbon. So we saved it. So the darning needles have a nice thick uh, eye on them, the eye of the needle. So the ribbon should fit through, which is really handy. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm just gonna, I want the ribbon to be about here. So I'm going to start here and you're just using the needle to guide the ribbon through the eyelets. So it goes in and out. You just weave it through, pull it through. If you didn't get a pack, you could use a bobby pin to do this as well. Or you could just push it through with your fingers. It's totally fine. The darning needle is just if you have it. So when you're pulling it through, you want to try and keep it flat, as flat as you can, stop it from being twisted. Yeah, so it's not twisted anymore, so it's like that. And continue weaving it through until we get back to the beginning. that up. So we want the two ends of the ribbon to be roughly the same length, so they are. Okay, and then we just tie a bow. There we go. <laughs> Not the best bow I've ever done. Okay, so that's how you would do that. If you don't do the eyelets, you could just make a bow and you could sew it on. So you could just sew that on there, wherever you want. That's an easier version. Okay, but I have just done the one with the eyelets here. Okay, so that's what it looks like in the end. Oops, it's a little bit tight actually. This is a good point. If it's too tight, you won't get your hand through it. I'm going to try that again. So that definitely fits me this time. I'll do the bow again. Yeah, let's check again. Perfect. That's great. So these are the finished gloves with the eyelets and the ribbons in them. So that's what they look like. Yeah, so that brings us to the end of the workshop. Uh, we hope you had a really nice time. I had such fun showing you all the different things. Um, so we hope you've learned something new. Maybe you learned some new stitches. Maybe you learned some new um, ideas of things you can do, some inspiration. So we really hope, if you want, um, that you might share your creations with us. So you might take a picture of what you've knit or how you've designed them and you could send them in. That would be super because I'm really excited to see all the different uh, creations that happen. And another thing we have on the website is the digital scrapbook. And that's basically where you or somebody else in your family or all of you could upload a picture accompanied with a memory. So this might be something that happened 30 years ago, something that happened last week, but some sort of memory that you have about knitting Somebody might have knit you something for when you were a baby. You might have a photograph of the, the thing that it was. Uh, it could be anything. So we'd love to see them. I have uploaded my knitting memories and so did my mom. Um, so you're more than welcome to do that. And 
Uh, like I said, you can still write any questions in the chat if you want to, and we'll get back to those as quick as we can, okay? So thank you so much again for joining us. Um, happy knitting!